Hi, I'm Helen Pollitt, and this is SEO in 2024. Helen, what's your number one SEO tip for 2024? So my tip for 2024 is that SEO needs to be fully integrated across the whole business to be considered more than just a marketing channel and to take its rightful place as a strategic business function. Okay, two main questions that spring to that um, are why and then how. So shall we start off with why to begin with? Yeah, sure. So if you, in my experience anyway, if you ask people in your business, what is SEO? The answers tend to range from, I've no idea and I'm busy serving a customer, please can you go away? Uh, All the way through to, well, it's keywords and backlinks. We SEOs tend to kind of sit in the metaphorical back corner of the office. Uh, We do marketing things with marketing people. And all we're good for is helping people find our website on Google. And that's all the vast majority of any business that you're working with seems to know about SEO. And I feel like that's a huge shame because the research that we do day to day as SEOs is incredibly valuable to the wider business. It gives insight into current market. It can measure brand awareness, levels competition, product market fit, all things that are critical to a well-functioning marketing strategy, but not just marketing strategy. It goes beyond that. So you'd still say that SEOs, or you still say that SEO is a marketing channel. It's just that it needs to be involved in many other areas in the business. I think so. It is predominantly marketing. It's historically been a marketing channel. And I think for us to completely redefine what SEO is, is going to be a bit larger project along the slog, but it's something that touches across a lot of different elements within a business. I mean, there's been a bit of an argument as to whether is SEO a marketing channel or is it more of a product department? And I can see that argument very much so because actually we're involved in so much where we touch on so many different functions of a website of um, a marketing channel of business development that actually it's quite difficult to just say we're only a marketing channel but I think predominantly we are and that's kind of that's where most SEOs will sit within a business will be within that marketing function. I like your definition of um, potentially a product I mean maybe it's not your your definition or the way you think about it but um, you could I guess say that um, SEO is an internal product that needs to be consulted when an essential decision that relates to technical infrastructure changes need to be made. Yeah, absolutely. I I kind of see myself as a product manager, product owner for SEO. I kind of, as an SEO, have that ownership over that product. And you can see that more when you're perhaps agency side or a, a con- contractor or consultant. You're very much offering the product of SEO. But when you're in-house as well, that's also kind of how you need to think that you are likely to be consulting with a lot of different teams, a lot of different departments on SEO and showing how SEO can help them to reach their end goals as well. So changing that mindset a little bit so that it's no longer SEO, just this kind of marketing activity thing that we do, a tactic to actually being a product or a a business growth lever, I think is really fruitful for us as SEOs. So there are many different departments, stakeholders within an organisation that um, can hopefully uh, have a positive discussion with SEO. Uh, You've mentioned before design, brand, engineering, customer services, UX, just to name a few. Um, So if an SEO is involved in an organisation at the moment that feels that they're just not uh, involved in the conversation, they're they're not asked their opinion in terms of how, how SEO could positively impact that particular aspect of the business. How does the SEO get more involved? I think it really starts with education because if if your company's overarching understanding of SEO is that it is a marketing tactic, it's something that you do to get people to your website and that's pretty much all they understand about it, they're not going to know that they should be asking you to be involved in some of those other conversations. So I like to give the example of when a company is looking at potentially moving into a new market. SEOs can be so valuable in that situation because we are able to to help people understand kind of what's the what's the product knowledge within that new market and what's the appetite for that product in the new market. What's competition like? What's what's the current um, 
peaks and troughs within seasonality, that sort of thing. We bring so much data and so much insight and wisdom across the board that when your company's making a huge strategic decision like, should we internationalize? Should we go to this new market? SEOs can provide a lot of the intelligence there that is needed to make that decision, but no one knows to ask us. And so as SEOs, I feel like we have to do that education bit of this is what we can be useful in doing. And also be a little bit forceful in involving ourselves in the conversation. So yes, you might not get invited to a meeting. You might not be included in a a conversation about something. But if you know that there's insight that you can add and you know that there's something that SEO can do that helps them to achieve what they're trying to achieve, then offer that. You don't have to be really kind of aggressive about it, but you can just share that information, that knowledge and say, this is, as an SEO, this is kind of what I think I could add to this conversation. And the more that you educate people that actually this is something that you care about, you're interested in, and you can advise on, the more likely they are to include you in future conversations about it. Okay, so you mentioned education a couple of times there as well. So what should internal SEOs do specifically? Should they actually create an internal course along the lines of this is why you should consult SEO on your decisions or something like that, and then market that course internally to get as many people as possible attending? Yeah, use those marketing skills. Absolutely. I am a broken record about SEO. Every time I start a new project with a company or I'm uh, working with a new set of stakeholders, it's SEO, SEO, SEO all the way. Everything is SEO because people are so unsure about what it is and what value SEO can add that you almost have to just keep saying, oh, SEO can help with that. SEO is this, this will do it, et cetera. So that people have SEO at the front of their mind when they're considering uh, data or they're considering strategy. And education can take a lot of different forms. So yes, a course is a great way of doing it, but you are never going to get your high level stakeholders on a course. They just don't have the time. So how else can you engage with them and educate them in a way that they are actually going to be able to process and actually have the time to consider? And oftentimes that will just be quick snippets of extra context or extra information in the conversation that you're having with them. If you're in a meeting with a senior stakeholder, and they ask for your opinion, give a little bit more context around why that's your opinion. Don't just say what it is. Try to educate in every conversation that you're having with people if it involves SEO. Some people just don't learn well through uh, courses. Other people need to have some written material that they can refer back to. Others like to ask questions. And so something that I've found to be quite successful in educating about SEO is having some kind of facility where people can come and ask you questions. So I'll host a half hour clinic once a month that anyone in the company, whether they're working on digital marketing or something completely different, can come along and just ask questions as simple as what is SEO? What's it even stand for? Through to I'm looking at uh, selecting a canonical tag for this page. How do I go about it? There can be so many different opportunities. You just need to find things that you're comfortable with and work within the kind of existing setup of your company so that you're educating people in a way that they're used to receiving and, and learning information. In order to have conversations with uh, senior leaders. As you said, they might not attend these training sessions. So perhaps an SEO needs to have some sort of elevator pitch that highlights the key reason why SEO needs to be involved in different areas of the business. So it might be useful for this conversation just to maybe touch on a couple of areas within the business and how you feel an SEO should sell what they do to that specific area of the business. So maybe starting with design, for example, uh, how should an SEO sell the importance of getting involved in design? Yeah, so designers will often have a a preconception that SEOs are there to say no to stuff. In fact, a lot of teams and departments seem to think we're there to say no to things. So perhaps that's something we need to work on. But for design in particular, we're there with so much information, so much data that can be really beneficial for them. We can tell them what people are interested in. We can tell them what pages people navigate between. We can tell them what we know is the end goal for a particular set of pages. And we can give them that extra layer of insight that they might not be able to get their hands on otherwise. A lot of designers won't necessarily be in the likes of Google Analytics or JAR or other data tools that allow them to see how people are acting on the website or what they're interested in, or even give them that kind of wider context of who their audience is. But as SEOs, we can do that. And we can talk to them about things like, well, navigation is hugely important to SEOs, but we know it's important to you as well as designers on a website. So this is what our ideal is. And what's your ideal? What would it look like? And where can we find a happy medium? A lot of the time with teams like design, you can actually have uh, 
quarterly sit downs with the head of design and say, what's on your roadmap? What are you looking to achieve in the next quarter for the design team? And I can tell you how I might be able to help you. And it then changes that conversation from SEO said no to this thing that I want to release to actually SEO and I've discussed this three months ago and we've already found a solution and we're rolling it out and here's all the data to back up that it's going to be successful. And you're there, it's, it's true collaboration rather than just kind of parachuting in when someone talks to you about something they're working on and saying yes or no to it. And design is a great opportunity to do that because it's two teams that wouldn't necessarily have a lot to talk about. Normally, you have to really make that effort to invite yourself into those conversations. And a lot of SEOs say that they understand brand now. They say that um, the work that they do impacts brand and they demonstrate that in the SERP. But I guess that um, a lot of uh, what a brand is about and how an SEO would uh, articulate the value of a brand isn't the same as how traditional brand experts within a big organisation would describe it. Um, So again, how how does an SEO work with uh, a traditional brand team internally? Yeah, I think you need to start looking at, well, actually, brand isn't what it used to be. Brand is completely augmented by social media, for example. So the concept of a brand, the society's understanding of that brand can change in a day because of something that went viral. Um, so SEOs have got a huge part to play in that because actually we we are oftentimes the first introduction to a brand a potential consumer will have. And we're also there along their journey. So if you are the first a touch point that a consumer has with a brand, that needs to make sure that everything about the brand in the SERPs is positive. So um, it's all that traditional online reputation management stuff that every time someone searches your brand, that people also ask questions are really positive ones. Or if they're not, that you are the answer to those questions and you can turn that negative into a positive. It's about communicating to your brand team that actually not only are you there supplying data, which SEOs do a lot, you're there to, to help them understand more about their audience and also to make sure that their brand messaging, the things that they want the audience to know, you're able to communicate through the likes of SERPs. There needs to be just less siloing, I think, amongst these teams that we're actually all trying to reach the same end goal. Um, and it's about trying to remove a little bit of that delineation between brand, SEO, PPC, uh, CRM, and actually just showing that for a consumer, we're all just the company that we're marketing and that's all they conceive us to be. So we have to be really uniformed and, and really aligned in what we're working on. So let's pick one more department outside of marketing, customer services. So uh, how can SEO consult with and work more closely with customer services? Customer services, they are such a good uh, ally to have within a company. They're so- If you can speak to your customer services teams, they can be amazing for insight. So you can actually hear from customers what's resonating well with them in terms of messaging or what pain points they have. But it's also very helpful for you to get a little bit more insight into things like complaints. So I mentioned before online reputation management. As SEOs, it can often fall to us to make sure the, the front page of the SERPs about our brand is all really positive. And if it's not, if you've got a load of negative reviews, for example, It's the customer services team that have probably heard that stuff first. And they're probably the ones that can tell you as an SEO, actually, this is how we deal with that kind of complaint internally. And that's what you should be saying to people through the the search results. So they can be a great source of uh, giving you information around, well, we get a lot of these kind of questions or a lot of these complaints come through. And as SEOs, we can then turn that into FAQs that can then just be served in the search results. So actually, we can bypass for them, a lot of the issues they're having by providing that copy, providing that content and making it really accessible from the search results. So it's, a, it's really it's a two way relationship with customer service teams. They can really help us uh, in giving us that information and insight that we struggle to get otherwise. Uh, but we can also help them by getting an extra layer of defense, an extra layer of um, information and customer support available online before they even have to pick up the phone or answer an email. If an SEO is struggling for time, what should they stop doing right now so they can spend more time doing what you suggest in 2024? I've got two things because they're both equally irritating to me, but I think we need to stop chasing all of the latest algorithm updates. I imagine every SEO says this, but we still do it. Uh, Stop chasing all those latest algorithm updates and all of the kind of arguing back and forth on X or various other social media platforms about 
what Google has or hasn't said recently. I think we spend far too much time obsessing over that and not enough time actually looking at our own internal data and working out what works well for our particular website in our vertical. Um, and secondly, I'd say that we need to spend less time uh, trying to push through that one ticket through the development team or that one ticket through the product management team that we think is going to solve everything for SEO and instead work more at changing the culture of the company so that it understands the value of SEO more. And by doing that, then those tickets get action a lot quicker. And so rather than trying to get that one ticket actioned quickly and pushed through the system, instead you're opening up a pathway for more of your tickets, more of your, sec your suggestions and recommendations to get implemented because you've shown the value of SEO to the company. Ellen Pollis is head of SEO at Car and Classic, and you can find her over at carandclassic.com. Ellen, thanks so much for being part of SEO in 2024. Thank you. I've been your host, David Bain. Get your copy of SEO in 2024, the book, over at seoin2024.com. <laughs>